everyone, my name is Emily and today we are going to be enjoying another sketchbook story time. I'm going to be doing one sketchbook story time a month for the next three months and or I guess two months if you include this month. And this video and those next two videos are brought to you in part by Skillshare. Skillshare is an awesome and interactive website dedicated to helping you learn a new skill. They've got thousands of video classes available from art to business and more. What's also great about Skillshare is that they're more affordable than most learning platforms out there. Their annual subscription rate is less than $10 a month. That's way cheaper than most people's monthly coffee expense alone. If you gave up three days a month of your venti mocha choco red cup holiday controversy, you would have yourself a Skillshare subscription. Just bam, like that. And what's better, a new skill that could potentially lead to a more fulfilling life or overpriced coffee? Please don't say overpriced coffee. Please, just, just sparkle up a cup of joe at home. Wait, wait, I bet, I bet you anything there is a Skillshare class for how to make a better cup of coffee. Aha! I just went and checked and oh my god. There is. There are there are multiple. I'm looking right now. There are many classes. Or, or courses about how to make a better cup of coffee. So there, get Skillshare today and learn to make a better cup of coffee than Celestial Body of Light bucks. Oh, and of course, gotta throw in the bit about being a mother to a one-year-old. I just really don't have the luxury to leave the house all the time to take an in-person class, but with Skillshare, I can have access to their online classes virtually anywhere with their mobile app. Yes, even when I'm sobbing in the bathroom. Now, I didn't use a class to help me make this art piece today, admittedly, but only because I'm trying to figure out how to make my own pumpkin spice lattes here at home. The first 500 people that click the link in the description will get their first two months of Skillshare premium membership for free. Don't feel like you need an inordinate... Don't feel like you need an inordinate amount of time or money to learn a new skill. Skillshare can help you do it affordably and on your own time. So join today. I can't believe I got through that. I always do this to myself. So let's go ahead and get into this story. This is something that is very common and happens to a lot of artists, especially smaller artists. Um, and, and back then I was very, very small. I think I had under 200 followers on Instagram and I don't believe I was posting on YouTube yet. Was I? I think I started in January 2016. L let me let me check that real quick. Yes, because my very first video was posted on January 18th, 2016. But obviously at that time, I wasn't very serious about posting on YouTube. So I was very much an unknown little babby artist. Now I've actually been posting my art online since I was 11 or 12. I mean, you can, I, you know what? Oh God, I gotta do that. Oh, that'd be such a good video where I go back on my old DeviantArt and just roast myself. Oh, oh, mm, quality content, such a spicy meatball. So my art has been out there floating around for well over a decade at this point. And kind of even back in 2016, I had a tendency to post my art other places or upload it to TinyPick. I don't know if that's even still around. Tiny pick uh, to just like share with people and to get um, the like raw URL or whatever for, you know, imprinting it on websites and things like that. Back then, and again, I don't know if you still can or whatever, you could upload to Tiny Pick without having an account. And a lot of the times I would be, you know, over time logged out of my account and I'd be too lazy to log back in. So I would just upload it randomly. And if you don't save that URL that you use, it just kind of gets lost in the stream of pictures being uploaded. So keep that little detail in mind for later in the story. So the artworks that ended up being stolen were this one and this one. And they're obviously both very similar in that kind of sketchy profile style with the graphic on the side or around the head, as well as they were uploaded at similar times, both on TinyPic and on my Instagram. So one day I was scrolling through Facebook and I noticed an ad with four t-shirts 
And you know, the ads on Facebook are very slim, so one t-shirt would have been hard to see, but four crammed in there was even harder to see. I just kind of, it caught my eye, and one of the t-shirts had a graphic on it that was so tiny, but it looked a lot like one of my pieces. It just caught my eye. And the reason I think this all magically happened this way is because I was uploading that image off of my phone. And I know that Google and your phone, like they scan images and things to kind of know what to sell to you. So that's my theory because I don't believe that one in a million chance that would have been suggested to me unless Google had like, you know, scanned the image or, you know, seen that I had uploaded the image elsewhere. I know it sounds conspiracy theoristy-ish, but a lot of it is based in truth. The things you text, the things you send, the things you upload, they're technically, you know, they're your property, but these companies use what you do to learn how to market and advertise back to you. You know what I mean? So oh, let me just throw in a really quick little story here. I think it was last Christmas, my niece wanted Timbaland boots. And obviously I don't care about Timbaland or any of that. You know, my husband and I are so out of that. We just don't, don't care about stuff like that. And my father-in-law, we were all eating dinner and he was talking about how she wanted some Timbaland boots. And the next day, my husband was getting ads for Timbaland boots, and we're just both like, oh, what weird ghost. Na, 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 Okay, obviously it's not ghosts, but I've always kind of been aware of this, and I wasn't even that, like, freaked out about it back then, but it's like, I don't know, uh, it just makes me think about stuff. <laughs> I'm a chicken shit. So I click on this ad and it takes me to a more than basic cafe press, stolen thumbnails, boutique, also promoting a local rapper. They were selling like EPs and demos and CDs of this one rapper and then like the other part of the website was like clothes and stuff like quote unquote merch but the merch was very much unrelated. You know what I mean? Like it just is like, hey yo, I'm a rapper and I'm also an up and coming fashion designer and I also produce washing machines. Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. He produces them. He births washing machines. It's a gift. Maybe he's born with it. Maybe he just shits out washing machines. I start scrolling through the merch section and lo and behold, there are two like plain white t-shirts with my artwork on them. Very poorly photoshopped on them, mind you. Very quickly as an afterthought, I wanted to add this. I was never 100% sure if it was just one person, like just the washing machine wrapper guy or two people running the boutique. I'm pretty sure it was just the one guy. And then also there were other artists were on his shirts. I didn't do the right thing and talked to these artists. I, I should have, you know, reverse Google image searched and done my civic duty, but I, I didn't. <laughs> and I, I feel bad about that still. So just adding that in as an afterthought, it was not only me. Now I have two uh, <laughs> dramatizations of what it kind of looked like. One of the pieces was directly ripped and just kind of edited a little bit to be more you know, cohesive, a little bit more circular. And the other one was like very poorly, worse than this, traced over. And then where like the little, um, oh, what's that called? Like paisley things that were in the original were, he added like sperm. Sperm with like, you know, slang inside of them. And I'm sorry, I just like added random slang and, and random words in mind, but that's kind of what it looked like. Now this confused me because my primary source of uploading my artwork was my Instagram. I had not uploaded these two pieces of art to my Instagram yet. And I had completely spaced that I had uploaded them to Tiny Pick. I guess just until after this all happened, I really never thought too much about what would happen when I'd upload pictures to Tiny Pick without being logged in. I just kind of assumed they disappeared. Very wrong. So first I was very baffled and kind of scared. I was like, this is only on my camera roll. And then obviously I went, oh no, I shared it with this person, this person. And then I go, would they, you know, share this with this random rapper dude? And then I'm like, wait, no, how did you share these things? You uploaded it to Tiny Pick. 
to send the link. Now, I don't 100% know this is how they got the pictures. It just, it just makes the absolute most sense. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, what, are they gonna hack onto my iCloud and get them? Very, very unlikely. So that is my assumption. So I sent them an email to their contact us email that was included on their website. And I said, hi, the artwork you're using on these two images belongs to me. If you'd like to purchase the licensing right to redistribute these pieces, then please let me know and we can discuss pricing. Otherwise, please remove the artwork from your shop. Emily, last name, and then I link my social medias. So I waited a week, I did not hear anything, and you know, I gave them the benefit of the doubt, even though they were stealing my fucking artwork. And I assume that maybe that business email was just a cosmetic thing, just something that they put there that they maybe didn't check it. So all I did was I copied that email that I had sent I found their public Facebook page, which they clearly used many times for shout outs, okay, and I sent a message to their Facebook page with that exact same email. I did not add anything to it. Waited a week, did not hear anything from them, so I finally sent another message that was a little bit more casual and I said, hey, this makes me really uncomfortable. Please remove this right now, or I might be forced to take legal action. And as you'll find out in a few seconds, I was very serious. By the way, forgot to mention, they had seen both of these messages. You know how the little, you know, little bubble comes down and it shows you when they see it on Facebook? They had seen both of these messages. So I got a little money out of my savings and I hired a lawyer to send a formal cease and desist letter. And now I would never do that because you really don't need a lawyer to file a cease and desist or file send a cease and desist letter. I didn't know that at the time. Um, it makes more sense to have a lawyer especially a copyright lawyer, which I did not hire a copyright lawyer. The lawyer I ended up hiring was an acquaintance and even said to me, look, I'm not a copyright lawyer. I can do this as like a formality, but I can't really, if you choose to pursue this case further, I really don't recommend having me at your side. And I'm sure from his standpoint, he's like, what are you doing? Like there's two pieces of merch with your artwork on it. They're $20 a piece, just let it go. And I know it sounds so defeatist, but it is 100% true. And I will get back to that at the end of the video. He writes up a formal cease and desist. We send it to their business address and we wait. About a week later, we receive a, uh, I don't even want to call it a document, a letter, a letter. It was not a legal document on a uh, printer paper with crinkled edges and a uniquely chosen font. The contents of of the letter are as followed. There is no Emily, there is no dear miss my last name, there is no reference to my lawyer, they just go right, right into the letter. We request that you stop attempting to contact rapper's name, not his legal name, as it is a form of harassment and you can be prosecuted under the court of law. Further contact will result in a restraining order by the county that he lived in's police department. Have a nice day. That's it. <laughs> oh, you, you, you thought there was more? Nope, that's it. That was it. Obviously, my lawyer informed me, he didn't have to, but he informed me that that is not illegally binding anything and that it is one of the funniest things he has ever seen from his whole career in practicing law and just told me to let it go. And I did. That's exactly what I did. And that's exactly what I should have done in the first place. All of a few days later, the merch was removed. I think the letter did end up scaring them a little bit. And all of a few months later, when I went back to show my friend, because I thought the website in general was hilarious, it was no longer there. It's like they had not paid their domain or whatever. It just wasn't available. 404, wannabe gangster rapper, up and coming fashion designer, and washing machine producer, not found. The moral of this story is kind of simple. And that is don't stop for every barking dog. And I know that sounds insane because yes, this person did take my intellectual property and try to sell it and make money off of it without my permission. And that is a terrible thing, do not get me wrong. But if you take a step back, if I would have taken a step back 
and like really used my head. This person's Facebook page only had like 10 followers. They had another Facebook page like more geared toward their music that I think only had like 20 followers or so. This person was not getting that much traffic. The reality of it is in my situation in particular is that I overreacted. I was 100% in the right for contacting this person. I was 100% in the right for continuing to contact this person, but it ended up being a waste of my time and money to go to a lawyer. If this were a bigger corporation, if this were a bigger boutique, like if this person actually had a store, like a real flagship store that they were selling my work at, that would be 100% different. I would definitely lawyer up and try to get them to stop redistributing my work. The reality of it was that this person was barely pulling in 30 followers with both their Facebook pages combined. I'm sure the website wasn't getting much traffic and the website was barely functional as it was. If something like this were to happen to me today, for example, I think I would continue to pursue, you know, keep messaging and, and trying to get in contact with this person, letting them know that, hey, you cannot redistribute my artwork. And if they really just would not listen or pulled some of that dumb sh like they did, I'd probably be very vocal about it to my own followers. And I don't think I'd choose the, the route of the lawyer this time. I just think it, and like I said, ended up being a waste of my time. So the general lesson is to analyze the situation. It's painful when you see someone take your work and try to pass it off as their own. And even though taking legal action may seem like the definitive, right thing to do, it's not in most cases. The reality of it is there is no 100% way to protect your work of any kind. And that can seem very frightening and it can make people afraid to put themselves out there or post their work online. But I'm here to tell you that the benefits way outweigh the risk. Like, absolutely. I adore sharing my work with you guys and I love that it means something to you. I would never have the wonderful connections that I do now if I would have let this event defeat me. There are always going to be weak weasels and sharks and boogeymen out there to get us, but the most important part is that we band together and we protect each other. And though I've had some things to say about the art community, I feel like it's one of the absolute strongest communities here on the internet. And at the end of the day, I am so, so grateful to be a part of it. So I know this story didn't have a perfect lesson at the end. You know, I know you probably want to hear that no matter what, you need to fight, 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 fight for your art and, and do whatever it takes, but sometimes legal action and spending the money and wasting your own time just isn't worth it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this sketchbook story time. Don't forget there is one next month and then the month after that and that final one is probably going to be the most interesting one uh, because I might have someone come on with me and talk about that experience with me. Anyway, thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to stay out of trouble. See you guys later.